if you can execute that throughout, I mean, yeah. and that's what we're talking about all, Everything. you can't leave yeah. something out. Right. Yeah. That we always talk about every piece of the car is a piece of art mm -hmm. in itself that works together for the greater good. Uh -huh. and, th and that's how we, we describe it. And you can see one of these cars, and there's a bunch here of like contenders in Amber and the Sloniker yeah. that you go, oh my God, that car is great. You walk, I'm like, but my eye just saw that. Uh -huh. And like, that doesn't belong. It doesn't fit. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it's got to be know, a cohesive mm -hmm. package. And, and some of that is subjective, but some of it is objective. We're like, sometimes it stands out where no matter who you are, you can see that maybe that doesn't match. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the subjective mm -hmm. part. That's interesting that because we've moved this show like Amber from what they used to do or like what Riddler does is they do a point. It's a points based thing. Uh -huh. they, they try to they try to make it make mathematical. it more objective. Right. Yeah. And in the end, you end up it ends up uh, discrediting the, 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 the show a little bit or, the, you know, the, the, the award because we build for aesthetic and design and beauty. And that was lost. What you he's know? politely saying is, is you'll build a, a gaudy piece of shit that's got 8 million modifications because you get a point for every modification. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Bancy, and car builder, Steve Strope. And we're going to tell you some stories. So welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith by my buddy, Steve Strope. Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith. And our special guest star here, Troy Ladd. And, and I'm, you know... I'm out of my element here. I will be the first guy to admit that uh, you know I have never been a street rod guy, but I neither I love is he. It. So I, he's so a Mustang is, guy. He's not a street rod guy either. <laughs> I think he's got a whole different. Now, we'll, we'll, we can, we can so, talk about. Okay, so, <laughs> so we'll stumble through this somehow. It's, it's, so, but it's so already a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it so quiet in here? Oh, wait, Started no, right away. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're it's like, it's grid, like twenty seconds in and it's falling apart. So take turns to talk. Oh, sorry, sure. sorry. Go, go ahead. Go. So we're at the Grand National Roaster Show. The, uh, our buddy, uh, um, somebody. <laughs> that's Steve. That's we have Steve. So I'm many friends. Just can it. Gave Just us, <laughs> gave us, a, gave us this place to uh, to shoot from, yep. and um, some fantastic cars. I have to admit that I mean, Louis got here. They shoved me in this scene. Mm. I saw your car outside though. Which one? And it was like the the the. Sp the speedster. The oh, you got to see the brown. No, you got to see, see the brown, brown car. Oh uh, well, see, I I know uh, just a little bit about that thing, and I mean not the one that you built, but right, the one they right. built in, in the beginning back Edsel in the thirties, right? For yeah. Edsel, Edsel Ford's car. So I mean that that's the only thing I've seen, you know. And then they dragged me in here, bolted me in the chair, and we're going. Okay. So I I, I I I have to go out and kind well, of you're investigate famous, a little bit. See, and so you have ah to. well okay. So um, anyway. Thank these guys from the from the Grand National Roaster Show for yep. for helping us out with this, and Kevin Doyle especially for for making this all work. Yep, He's Kevin and, and owner John Buck, right John yep. Buck, guys allowing us to film in here. Yep. And that's we really a, really we cool. He has a bitchin' little '56 Chevy, by the way. Yeah, yes, he does. So, because uh, I did a little story with him a couple of years ago. So, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. Yep. And um, so we're here. We're having fun. We're meeting a lot of new people. We met for the first time just a few minutes ago. And uh, so let's get this ball rolling, shall we? Okay, well, so. this is simple. If you don't know who Troy Ladd is, Google his name. <laughs> <laughs> and then you will be educated. He's, he's actually an ex-model. And uh, no, that's that's Hollywood Hot Bods. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a different. I'm Hollywood Hot Rods, rods uh, today. The porn version. No, that's <laughs> Hollywood. That's Hollywood Hot Rod. Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, the, yeah. All right. I'm just gonna go back to this and <laughs> see how the show's gonna do. Wait, did we already go sideways? And it's how many? Yeah, yeah we're only three minutes, couple minutes in. in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so Lad is, uh, has become a real good friend. He's a phenomenal, and I'm sure if you're tuning into the show, you're into this kind of stuff and you know, Troy's, you know, Troy's name and all of his amazing, amazing work. The only person I know of in the history of our little sport, uh, to win America's most beautiful roadster and America's most beautiful custom back to back in the same year. Really? Unprecedented. Wow. Uh, with, a, with an amazing wow. car that's actually here on display in Mick Jenkins, my, my painter, his painter, uh, in the booth. But you have two cars here today one in contention for America's most beautiful roadster and one in contention for the Al Sloniker Award. 
Right, award. and we, we, we tend to do stupid things like that. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> we, we overload yourself. We did because, because, who, because Amber is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's I mean, huge. and like, and like and can, Steve can tell you, like, when we started this and you're growing up and you're, you're, you're growing your business and you, you look up to things like Riddler and Amber. Sure. And Amber is one of those things that when you're starting out, you don't even know if you'll ever be able to be in that arena. Yeah. yeah. You know? Even in the building. And even in the building. Yeah. And like yeah. the first time I did it, I, I, it was just the, the most awestruck, amazing things. I did it with a with my own car, which is owner funded, owner built, which is unheard of. Yes. And that was in 2007. Steve actually helped me on yeah. that because he yeah. was also, we were both relatively new as, yeah. as businesses. Yeah, we as businesses. Yeah, as businesses. And uh, he's like, you're trying to do this thing for, for, for Amber and you're just a, a regular guy like me. He's like, I'll come over and help you. Yeah, I brought, so I brought him over and we yeah. helped him. You know, yeah. and I, still, really? I still haven't wow. paid him for that, but no. that was 2007. <laughs> so yeah, there's I, a think, lot of I think he forgot. <laughs> hopefully he forgot. <laughs> but sorry not to get sidetracked, but that is such a huge deal. And yeah. now I was thinking about it the other day and we've done Amber like seven times now, I believe. Wow. So I was, I was talking, I was, I was thinking, like, does that make us like the greatest Amber builder of all time or the biggest loser of all time? Because we only won once. You know? Here, here you so, said right? exactly. But we don't call yeah. it losing. We call it it's runner up. You know? Yeah, well, but just to be in, in the selection process, right? Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that, and that is, and, and you know, you, you have to really keep a clear head on this kind of stuff because I always tell customers, they're like, oh, my car is so nice. I want to put an Amber. Like, whoa, whoa. We're going to take a relationship of years that we've had a positive, exciting, fun, creative relationship. And then there's a possibility if you get caught up in the competition, you're going to, you're going to put a dark cloud on our journey. So I always explain that to them. Like if you'll go to Amber with the idea that you're going to get a jacket and a cool parking spot Mm -hmm. and that's all you expect, I'm in. But if you get caught up in the competition, I don't want to be part of it. So, you know, it's 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 hard to keep a straight head because I mean you get proud of what you do, sure, you know, but you sure. also have to be reasonable with your expectations. And and <clears throat> I've I've never been a part of any of this stuff, but but it, but the thing what got me into car one of the things that got me into cars was the fact that I could do drag racing and if that guy beats me, okay, it's it's an objective situation. He went quicker than I did. He got there first. He wins. But this is more subjective. It is. This, and is, this is like the, the, the ballet people or, or like the skaters where the Russian judge goes, oh, she was a two. Right. And the American judge <laughs> gives her a 10. It's like, well, wait a minute. So, and, and I don't, and you're a judge it, this the, year. The, there's, a, there's a lot of things I want to back up on mm. it with Troy. Because Troy and I have interesting uh, tra- trajectories of what we did and, and stepping backwards and I'll go right to where you're talking about in okay. a second. Um, it's so interesting. We said we didn't even know if we'd ever be in the room. Yeah. And then for the last bunch of years, we both have booths here yeah. and we're doing <laughs> interviews here yeah. and we're talking to magazine editors here and it's, and I know you share this. It's so surreal. Cause I remember the 18 year old me in Apple Lake in New York. Couldn't wait for my new issue of hot rod to come out yeah. and to know all the names and these guys are still walking around here yeah. and we know and we meet them, we say hi to them. And I go, I go to the room at night yeah. and, and I, it, it, <clears throat> there's lots of times I'm all psyched because yeah, they took the car and yet, and the other hand it's like, wow, it's so crazy who I hang out with and who I talk to and who bothers wanting to talk to me. And, and I know you, you, you parallel me and then um, because well, you're from the same kind of, I read the books and when you were telling me in your background before you started your shop, he, he actually had a real corporate world job and yeah. was excellent at it. Yeah. And he would come in with his briefcase and have hot Street Rod magazine, Rider, yeah, Street Hot Rod, Rod magazine <laughs> in his briefcase. Well, what's so crazy about what you just said is, again, thinking that we'd never be in the room. So I'm reading about guys like Pete Shaporis, sure. Roy Brizio, guys yeah. like that. And yeah. Roy Brizio has always kind of been my, my kind of mentor in this because mm-hmm. he's such a good guy. Yeah, he is. You, he can't, is you will not find anyone guy. that has a bad word to say about yep. him. Yep. And I always wanted to be that guy. That guy. So. Right. So like you're looking up to these guys and not only did we get in the room and got in the building after a while, these guys are my contemporaries. They think we're equal. I don't think we're equal. I don't, you know, yeah, sure. I don't think we're equal, yeah, but sure, 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 because they, they've been there first. Yeah. Yes. And they, they think yeah. we're all on the same page. Like Pete yes. Shapour. So we were building that, that Mohan speedster. He would come over and we'd talk about it. And I was like, like we're best friends. We did become friends by like, 
to, to have that evolution from just starting again, yeah. you and uh, Steve and I both relatively small, short sure. trajectories to get sure. Sure. to where we're at. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so crazy it is. that, and then, and people look up to us for some stupid Cause re- we're old. reason. Cause we're old. That's <laughs> why. But like, that's just shocking to me. You know, it's just, yeah, it's just it shocking is. that, it, that it we're, is. we're part of that. That yeah, we yeah. That looked strata. up to. That strata. So, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a very interesting just life that, how, how, how it's worked yeah, it's, out. And uh-huh. I still don't really accept that we're the guys that other people are gunning for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, sure. yeah. which yeah. is, it's it, just, it's it, just weird. And, and, yeah. and, and I, and I echo that. It's like, I don't position, I don't mentally think of myself there, mm-hmm. you know? And then people are always hey, coming up to you or complimenting or why I like, like you're working. Wow. I can't wait to meet you or wow. I'm so excited to see your cars. And you're like, really? Well, and even uh, it's, it's, it's a very odd, it, right. It's a, it's an odd feeling. You're proud of it. Yeah. And you're like, hey, man, I earned that. That's cool. But in the back of your head, you're kind of like, yeah. oh, I don't well, know what they're l- thinking. Last they're year, they put me in the, in the Hall of Fame. So I'm now yeah. in the Hall of Fame here. I'm that? like, And I was at the Hall of Fame dinner last time. I'm like, all those Look people. Look at all those people. Plus me. Yeah. Like, that's how <laughs> I see it, right? <laughs> right. Like, all those people when, plus. When, when yeah. they yeah. gave me Builder of the Year a little, I was like going, Art, Art you got the right number? <laughs> yeah. I, are you sure? Are you, yeah. It, well, that's just surreal. because we pay for the biggest booths. <laughs> <laughs> Way to crush my dreams. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's because so, that's because you just spend money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I got a question uh, because I've always thought about this. I, I I've tried to build pretty cars and I can't do it. You know, so I decide I'll just go fast instead because that's easier. Sure. So um, can you give me like one snippet of like one area of one little part of the car that you have to concentrate on for an amber car in order to be <laughs> all, all of it, the whole all car? Of it. Right. Everything so cohesive. There, everything. It, every. That there has to be a screw in the back yep. is going to be the same clock as a stupid screw up in the front yes. of the thing. It's forever. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there, there has to be, a, we always develop like a, a backstory in a way or, or, a, or a, a plausibility. Uh-huh. We, we like, and, and Steve does it too, mm-hmm. like a plausible story. Like we'll be able a 32 roadster with European specs as if it would have raced at Surrey, uh, at the racetrack in Surrey, Brooklyn. Uh-huh. And you put that story together and then if you can, execute that throughout and, yeah. and that's where we're talking about all Everything. you can't leave yeah. something out right yep. that we always talk about every piece of the car is a piece of art mm-hmm. in itself that works together for the greater good uh-huh. and, th- and that's how we we describe it and you can see one of these cars and there's a bunch here of like contenders in amber and the sloniker yeah. that you go oh my god that car is great you walk i'm like but my eye just saw that uh-huh. and like that doesn't belong. It doesn't fit. Right. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it's got to be know, a cohesive package. Mm-hmm. And and some of that is s- subjective, but some of it is objective. Where like sometimes it stands out. Where no matter who you are, you can see that maybe that doesn't match. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the subjective mm-hmm. part. That's interesting. That because we've moved this show like amber from what they used to do or like what riddler does is they do a point it's a points based thing uh-huh. they, they try to they try to make it make it more objective right yeah. and in the end you end up it ends up discrediting the the the, the show a little bit or the, you know the, the the award because we build for aesthetic and design and beauty and that was lost what you he's know. politely saying is, is you'll build a, a gaudy piece of shit that's got 8 million modifications because you get a point, point for, for every each, modification. Yeah. Okay. So it's not about taste. Okay. It's not about execution of style or a theme. Yeah. It's about as many mods and as many chromed this and as many this and that okay. to rack up points in the, in the, in the little selection box. Okay. And that is what... We try to differ here, and, and I, this is where I was actually I was going to swing back around. We were talking about judging. Uh-huh. Troy has been a judge. Mm-hmm. I've been a judge. I'm currently judging a class that he's in, yeah. <laughs> Odd, oddly <laughs> enough, so he can start kissing my ass. Right <laughs> and, the, and the hundred dollar bills will start traveling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Swing that over. So, but it's it's it's, and we judge this way. We look for the quality of the work, of course. Sure. And the difficulty of execution, not to sound Olympic tumbling about mm-hmm. it, but mm-hmm. there's a, there's difficulty of execution. Sure, absolutely. And there's fit and finish, no duh, all the way everywhere is the paint super perfect all the way up in the crack where you can't even see. Right. But, and I, and I know you parallel me on this, there's also a line of somebody does 8 million things, but it's, 
Ugh. That's you right. Know, it's just, it's just, and and I I won't swing for that. It's got to be tasteful. It's got to follow the execution of the car, mm-hmm. which he does in spades, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's it, and and we're trying with the Sloanaker Award to be the premier award that allows everything because Roadster is only Roadster for forty eight. Forty eight. Uh, four, forty eight. Is it no? No, it's or like it's like thirty. Is it thirty nine? Really? Or oh, it's, it's, it's pretty it's early. Well. So. That's pretty pigeon held. Right. Sloaneker, right. we have a Volkswagen in there right now that's making it's him. In, it's insane. Pan yeah. heavy. <laughs> yeah. and, it's, really? and, it's, really? and it's without yeah. looking at it, it, I mean, if you walk by it, it's not flared. It doesn't have all this crazy mm. work on it. It's just but ours amazing. Does. But the it's detail, amazing. But the detail <laughs> is phenomenal. <laughs> so yeah. But, but I, I love that. We've got a, we've got a 40 um, Suburban. That with thing With the most is beautiful so interior. Cool. Really? Oh, it's yeah. so cool. And the fit and finish in it's... It's it's a phenomenal. nice car. It's a nice it's car. It's phenomenal. So we've got that in his amazing 32 and this Volkswagen. And then we have a really cool Pro Touring Camaro. Yeah. Then we have a mega high tech 32 Ford, the yep. polar opposite of your car. Exactly. And yeah. then the Impala. Um, the Impala. Big, is great. big Oaks Impala, which yep. has been re- reverse sectioned. And people love oh, the car. People, well, people yeah, love that's the, <laughs> yeah, neat colors. So there's, I love being a judge at that because we have a variety of styles of cars coming in and you've got to put your hat on and, and go, what am I looking at here? And then listen to the, uh, to the builder or mm-hmm. the owner of what's been done to it and then yeah. kind of dig into it. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's fun and interesting and it keeps the judging staff on our toes because when we're looking at, per example, that bug and its level of whatever it has – and then with like, for example, Troy's car, which is very intricate and a lot of a lot of design work and, and engineering, and you take that in its own envelope, and then you're trying to put those two Compare together. Compare together. And like, yeah. How do you, you know, do you're that? Short, you're short. How do you do you know, that? A lot of arguments. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of but but you, you have to you you have to force that type of judging. Okay. Or else you're going to end up with the ugly car with the shiniest bolts. Yeah. Right. And yeah. So yeah. and then you know that's the hard part. And 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 you know when I do, when I judge Amber, it's the same with the Sloniker. The first thing you do is the car drives in and you sit there and look at it from afar and you get a gut feel. Right. You, how's the guy sit in it? How's yeah. the silhouette How work? Does he look in the car? Yeah. And yeah. those no, are and all we the do things. the same. We have you pull up. Yeah. And, and drive in. in front of yeah. Car, it has to be a running in. car. Yeah. And and we see no we see how the guy sits in the car. Uh, we want to see the whole profile. And the whole okay, stance. it all sure. matters. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not just if it's the most incredible and, shiny. And, yeah, because if you, you actually all hear hunched it, right? up over it, it's somebody it's not didn't do practical. their job right. Yeah, if you're not yeah. sitting in the car, you don't look cool as hell. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> what well, well, you got well, that car for if you don't look like, good? Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. You don't look good. You ain't styling. What are you doing? Get that thing out of here. So one of the things I like to do is always assemble an engine with ARP bolts, and it's not just because they're sponsors, but because it really does work. Um, and and the stuff is fantastic. I never have to worry about it. Steve, you building building cars too? Yeah, uh, actually, it's part of my baseline design plan when I'm building a car that's going to be shown or featured in a magazine. It's part of the plan right. to have that little bit of diamonds all over the engine bay or in the suspension. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff is beautiful. I remember uh, a long time ago, I built the uh, first time I ever touched it, 69Z28. All of the uh, water jacket holes had stripped out, yeah. and I learned about ARP studs. So check them out at arp-bolts.com or check out their catalog. You'll find everything you're looking for. Well, and you look <laughs> at most cars, like in car shows on a display, they look broken, in yeah. my opinion. They're up on stands, crooked, the doors are open, the yeah, trunk's open, like, so... So it's everyone almost, can see, yes. but it looks exploded. It almost looks like it's been an accident. Yeah, yeah so yeah. so that, that this whole concept that it's, it's been, oh, I don't know, six or seven six years. years. Six years? Yeah, yeah. It, it takes all the way. It's more of a concord type judging. Like, yes. see it in motion. Hear it. Yeah. See the person sitting in it. Sure. See the profile. See how yeah. it sits. Yeah. And then it goes on its stage and gets exploded. So, so, yeah. so I had not thought about that before, but how it sounds also. How it sounds. Sure. It has to sound yeah. pleasing, but yet aggressive, or, or, at, or least at least sounds like what it looks like okay yeah. okay which i mean we could probably do a whole hour show on why <laughs> why it sounds like what it looks like i right. never even thought of that before yeah. but that's a really good point it yeah. is and they're, and they're all very different his car pulled up and he's also got a go- exhaust cutouts and he opened and closed them so yeah so we <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then and then again it, 
since it's been in, in the conversation flow, that little folks, he has 15 to 1 compression. So it snaps. It? Oh, it's so, it so snaps. angry. It's when, I, when I heard it drive in, I was unsure if it was even a, a flat Volk floor. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it yeah. is. So this brings up five hundred. So this brings up five liters. A yeah, monster. This brings up an interesting question. You know, so like uh, I, I've been watching Mike Copeland things lately. This that uh, hydrogen powered engine that he had would that have? He's building an LS. He's got he built it for SEMA. It's hmm. an LS powered forty eight Chevy truck, but it's hydrogen powered. Now it's still hydrogen. An oil, hydrogen yes. So they're they're injecting gaseous <laughs> hydrogen. So what you could do is have a fifteen to one compression motor that would sound really nasty, but still be drivable. Right. Sure. Because it has the octane to do it. Would that have any impact on you as a judge? The neato factor. The neato factor. The I, interesting factor. Okay. But it's still okay. got to be the, what the it looks problem like with it. the problem with stuff like that uh, that I see from my judging part yeah, yeah, yeah. is is execution. Yeah. Pe- people like when LSs were newer, coyotes are like, "Ooh, I'm going to put it in my in my my show car," yeah, and then you look done. at it, it's like but I see all the plastic and crap that's in the new yeah. Mustang. So yeah. you have to be able to... to or it's to just do, an ugly engine, yeah, right? We talk, yeah. Yeah, you have to do all of the things. You mm-hmm. can't just like, look at me, I put a I, crazy engine in there, but yeah. it still looks like it shouldn't be in there. Like, to so your point, the whole, the whole thing. Everything. The whole thing. Mm-hmm. Everything. Now, if yeah. you did this amazing application... And then tells me it runs on hydrogen. And yeah. And yeah. Then you're like, now you get style points. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blow it, it fit the image and fit in there, and everything looks super trick. And how you remolded this or that, or did uh-huh. whatever you did and made a cohesive visual. And then you tell me it's on hydrogen. Yeah. And it's running like eighteen to one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. At that point, okay. you, it, it would at least mentally go. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get an extra different. point for that. Yeah. Right. You get. You get. Well, it's, it's not really a point, but it's a uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's a value, an added value to right. to your judging part of it. Right, but it, but it could yeah. actually be a negative value if you look at it and it doesn't fit in the hole, like yeah. if, if that engine didn't right. fit where it's supposed right. to be. And so. see, one of the problems with that would be it's like he had to have this giant, you know, tank, this pressurized tank that you've got to put somewhere. Right, and it, you know, so it, try it to hide it, that it, thing, please. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's what they got package trays for. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> put the bomb under there. <laughs> So can we talk about this car out here, the your recreation of the Edsel Ford car? Sure. Yeah. You can talk about anything I'm, you want. I'm interested in that. <laughs> I think that's because I've, I knew I knew just a little bit about it. And then now has that car, did it disappear, that okay, original so, car? So, no, the original car is in the Ford Family Museum, okay. I believe. So it's on display in the Ford Family Museum. Okay. So there's the, the, the original is one. Okay. Uh, there's only one. So this right. one is an interesting story. So uh, a guy in Italy... Um, decided that he wanted to build a 34 model Edsel Ford. Okay. So he did it all by researching books and, and magazines or anything he could get his hands on information to recreate like that car, uh-huh. but he never actually accessed the, the car as far as I know. Okay. So, and his friend worked in an aircraft uh, f- a factory at some point mm-hmm. and knew how to shape aluminum. So they just literally home built in their garage, made that body. Cause I, when I walked up, it's yeah, like, it's a good, yeah. this has to be all panel beater stuff, right? It is. Uh, in it's Italy. all aluminum. All aluminum in Italy. Wow. And um, again, but the, the neat thing is home garage, just a guy and his buddy building that thing. Home. Yeah, and I, I've got pictures of it. It, it. They wireframed it. Then they did some reinforcement. Then they laid panels over and like, dang, that's wow. pretty cool. Wow. And then one of my customers bought it and shipped it from Italy here. And when okay. we got it, um, they have a, a limited access of stuff there. So like the gauges and some of the brake lenses, a lot of the stuff just wasn't quite up to par to make okay. a nice driving car because my mm-hmm. uh, uh, customer wants to drive the crap out of it. So, and uh, my customer couldn't fit in it. <laughs> so we, we had to cut the body up a little bit, open up the passenger compartment. Uh-huh. We made all new hand-shaped aluminum fenders and then moved a, a bit of stuff around Wow! to, to rebuild. And then the mechanicals, and it has a 3, uh, 337 flathead in it, okay. Lincoln flathead, mm-hmm. that we, we did some speed equipment and things on it. So it, the whole purpose was just make a fun driver. Yeah. And then, yeah, when, once it went to mix paint, then the whole thing turns into a, a whole different level because when you have one of his paint jobs, it's... Yeah, now the rest of the car has got to follow suit. Yeah, now the rest of the car looks stupid. Yeah, so, right. yeah. so right. yeah, we after we did that, and then it went to Mark Lopez for interior, who's mm-hmm. got... Usually there's three or four amber cars sitting on the floor that he's done. Wow. And he's, he's pretty... Uh, just a super humble, nice guy, but just amazingly talented. So once it got there, the owner looks at it, he's like, you know, we should put an amber. Like, God damn. 
really? <laughs> Seriously? It was for driving, man. Yeah. And so. So uh, uh, what, mm-hmm. what kind of process was this? Once you got the car, how long did that take? Um, we, we've had it for quite some time because mm-hmm. uh, when we got it, we were still doing his, his, the Packard, the Mulholland Speedster, okay. same yeah. owner. Mm-hmm. And then we had some other cars in line. So it took a while to kind of rotate in. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and, and then uh, it all kind of came together, I think, the last like year or so. Wow. Um, so once it goes to paint jail, then it's, it's in the, it's in the, <laughs> yes. uh, the home yes. run, you know, yes. the end. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, then when he wanted to go to the, to Amber, we're looking at it like, well, we didn't, we'd have to go through all the suspension, so everything over. Take it all back apart again. No, what we ended up doing is we, we, we looked under it and trying to figure out how to make it show ready. And like, mm-hmm. what if we build full belly pants? So it has full aluminum belly pants front to rear. Uh-huh. So the entire uh, mechanical chassis part of that car is literally sealed up. Uh-huh. And if you Mick Mick had to paint the belly pants after the fact, if you crawl into that car, it's it's weird because it's like looking at a, a funhouse mirror. It's a perfect, just green belly pan of uh-huh. reflection. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm curious what the what the judges said in the judging room on that because like they can't. Really see, can't see, see a lot of anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they also would have to go. Holy crap! That was some work to do those belly pants. So, <laughs> sure. so anyway, yeah, that's kind of the story of that. And then we, we okay. brought it, and uh, the customers just excited. And, and one of the reasons we brought it too is uh, there. There's uh, usually a high percentage of Fords, you know, mm-hmm. 32 Fords that end up, and just that's just because it is the quintessential hot rod. Right. So right. Amber, you get a lot of 32 Fords, yeah. and so the owner thought, hey, let's talk to John Buck and and see if. He wants this Edsel because it'll give a little bit of, you know. Something different. Something especially, different. Especially to this year because this is the 90th anniversary. So there's a lot of 32 Fords here. Yeah, yeah. So that was part of the part of the, the, the reasoning to actually bring it. It's a yeah. great looking car. Mm-hmm. It's unique and it shows well. So, yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. why. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, as far as the competition, it wasn't originally built for this okay. so we, we have no misconceptions okay. of you know, <laughs> you know and then your other car <laughs> my other car we're pretty serious about so yeah we'll get we'll get some photos up on the screen of this thing the the 32 that he has over for the sloniker award is is uh, you you could have seven thousand photographs of every detail of this car and it's <clears throat> it's still bottomless uh, I, I I can tell you, for the heck of it, or I'll just do this. Guess my favorite thing on your car. <laughs> Exhaust. Not my favorite. Extremely impressive. Okay. Oh, interesting. Not my favorite. You'll probably go what, but mm. it 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 made me go. I like that. Um, possibly. I'm just saying things that I like maybe, but possibly. The underfloor combination of colors and sheens and rivets. Absolutely love that and brag on you for it, but not my favorite widget. 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 Front suspension. I, wow. I, 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 like, I know. Well, the problem is <laughs> perfect example of the builder, and there's 8 million things done on this yeah. car, sure. so his mind's racing. I love the whole working combination ratcheting and the strap and the little emblem and the chrome cover for the pulls for the windows. Oh my gosh. I I I really I, oh. really? I, I geek out on that <laughs> stupid thing. Every time I walk by I'm like, it's the coolest little do thing. You, do you <laughs> wait, wait till you go see it. Just yeah? it's it's a la Shelby 350R where you okay. just pull it or the or a hemi dart. Right, where you, you pull, pull the strap down. down. But this yeah. is elaborately done with this Beautiful little buckle, and, and it red's got a little ratchet to it. It's, uh, it does. It's, well, that fits in with how so with like your thing with watches. It, yeah, I mean, it, it kind yes, of feels like yeah. that. So, yeah, oh, there you I, go. I, so, I, that I, is cool. So I, there, I, I, there I is a builder, if you when know. You were when you were showing us that, yeah, I was I, like, I, I must have it. Ah, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, I, I fought. I actually fought for that because. Well, you should have uh, fought for when that. When we were putting the car together, they, they were just having a heck of a time making that work because to get the weights and things in the, and we yep. wanted glass, not plexi. And we actually thought the glass would help because we need, we actually need weight yeah. to bring it down. Sure. Because with the chop and all that, the fuzzies and the little tracks, it's we'll, all very we'll tight. Capture it. It captures it. Right. So when you have a roll up thing, you can roll it past that. But we, right. we thought that the glass would make it just drop. Uh-huh. It doesn't because of the fuzzy. <laughs> so there's actually extra springs and things that are so all Pulling the way it? up to pull it down. Really? And once it gets started, then it comes down. It but comes down. Yeah. 
Yeah, my guys kept, they said, we're not going to do it. I'm like, you have to. I really, really want it. And they would try again. And then Kyle, Kyle is the guy that, that he was so mad at me because I kept pushing him and pushing him. Like, I really want the strap thing. So, and uh, later I'll tell you what all that mechanism and clicky yeah, tooth I'm thing to know. is. I'm you're you're going to go, no. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm looking forward it's, to, dude, it's you're super, a genius. You're it's such super a mad stupid genius. simple. It's super. Great. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's the best part so, of it, right? So just so you know, one of the things that, that uh, we do a lot, I, we call it MacGyvering. So we, I mean, I, 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 it makes me angry and disappointed that on the internet and people like, oh, million dollar builders and oh, it just costs money or, or home built or, or built not yeah, bought. Yeah. So, so what I want to tell everybody is we do this for a living, but we are garage builders that just built this shit as a hobby. That's it. So there's no there's no machine in our shop that we pump hundred dollar bills and parts come out. It's <laughs> dudes, really regular I wish dudes. I do. I, wish I have was. a machine. So, <laughs> so one of the things that I I want to see like that. Yeah. So one of the things I love. I'd want that just pumps out hundred dollar bills. Actually, well, the opposite. Yeah, you don't feed them and they come out. Yeah, they just come out. But one of the things I love to tell people is we do MacGyver shit. Like, I, like yes. I'll, I'll tell you later where that comes from. But it's just so simple. But like the the headlights. Like there's these insane fluted glass Marshall buckets and that's just crap I bought. Like I bought the old buckets and rings on eBay. The the, the fluting is something you can actually get from <coughs> Home Depot. Um, <laughs> and we we made the little ring. Um, and I'm proud of the fact that we can yep. make over the top crazy creative shit with stuff that you can just buy on eBay and local. I have, you know? I have tried to tell many yeah. people this and you're gonna parallel me. High end show car, high end Car, car, the whole secret is how you problem solve. Yep. Yeah. We've got to hide this. We've got to make this look like, how do we bring this to look like? Yeah. It's a, that's the problem. Yeah. Problem solve. Yeah. All it is, is problem solving mixed with art. Yeah. Right. How it looks right. to solve the problem right. afterwards. Right. How do you, a, a, a great simple thing that I, besides your fantastic little window thingy, <laughs> The um, um, uh, his name just dropped. Goldman's the the other thirty two the, the 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 mocha colored one, mm, the high tech mm-hmm. one. In their trunk, they have a battery box. It's got, but it's it looks like a piece of luggage with luggage latches. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. It's not Love the most that. amazing, yeah. but the execution of that problem solving. Right. Really, it finishes out the trunk. It balances it. It looks really nice instead of just some square covered it with leather over top of it. It looked, yeah, because the car is very high tech. So yeah. it gives the image of matching luggage back mm-hmm. there. And that's a, another fantastic, it's a problem solver. And it was executed artfully. Yeah. And, and yeah. stuff like and that. And that's all this is. You guys are overthinking it. Yeah. And, it and, and the reason it costs money mm-hmm. is to come up with a functional, working, artistic solution takes hours yeah. and if yeah. you're not doing it yourself and if you're paying somebody to do it then it costs money mm. then you take a car with hundreds if not thousands of alterations and artistic problem solvers i.e and you guys you'll get on the internet you'll see his car soon enough this 32 we're talking about multiply that times how many hours it takes to make this shit yeah, from pixie dust. You, right. You'll see his outer worldly front suspension. <laughs> that didn't, that just didn't come. He didn't just, you know, get a kit from Pete and Jake's. <clears throat> All of it had to be engineered, thought of, make sure it actually functions and works safely down right. the road. Sure. And then <clears throat> I don't know how many of you actually pay for Chrome plating, but it's insultingly oh. expensive yeah. oh boy. <clears throat> to you get know. it done. That's not yes. my when I hand the customer, he's not chrome plating. We get a bill that chokes a horse. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> That's why these cars are expensive. They're an accumulation of hours, ingenuity, time, creativity, giving a damn. And then outside vendors, we pay for powder coating, chrome plating, yeah. stuff to be leather wrapped. Yeah. It just adds up. It's that, it's that simple. I don't sit there, and I know you don't sit there, and we don't go... This idea is going to cost you a million nope. and a half. Hand yeah. it over. Yeah. That's There's, what no way. Way. There's no way that you could do that. That's yeah. what people don't understand, at least for me. It's not about making money. We don't, we don't even we think don't about it. We don't make money. I don't make money. No, it's about art. And that's the, that's the, uh, the, the, the curse 
of an artist, any mm. artist, any yeah. type of artist. Yeah. It's like you want the world. It's more important for the world to see your art and show the world what you can yep. do sure. rather than making money. But then you have that problem of life. Yeah. So you have to add that eating, in. Cause eating you, and, right. and but, keep the lights on at the shop right. and pay and pay your so guys. It's a hard, I mean, I, I, I have a, a degree in, in business, but also do art. So those two brains yeah, they, fight. They fight all and the time. Art, art yeah. guy wins. Yes. Yep. Art guy wins. Like, <laughs> let's just do it. I'll do it for free. I, I yep. just, cause I want to see it. Thank you. We do so I do much that stuff too. for free. Just I do that because too. I want it. Oh, you want to see it all the way through. I hope you got to look right. I hope my wife isn't listening to me here. I'll be in so much trouble. <laughs> you do what? We'd like to introduce you to a new sponsor of ours. This is InTheGarageMedia.com. Some friends of ours that were in the print magazine business before and now started their own books. we got All Chevy Performance, Classic Truck Performance, and Modern Rotting. Yeah, these are awesome books. They've got uh, lots of uh, educational and entertainment things in them. And they're even good enough quality to include Steve Strope quality maybe, vehicles. Maybe. Uh, he's we'll working see if up I'm to allowed it. in there. Right. I don't know. So in the garage media, in the garage media.com. Check them out. Check them out. Get your subscription, sit and read it. And with ARP, it's not just a lot of intake manifolds, uh, studs for heads, right. but they also have a humongous selection of American and metric that we use all throughout the car, even large bolts that we use on the suspension components because you want that same strength, that same durability and reliability, right. plus the beautiful looks. And the and, stuff outside the catalog. Right. They have a special order program where if you're if you're a builder and you need some special stuff made, they can do that for you. So it's an amazing, amazing company to work with. So check them out at arp-bolts.com or check out their catalog. You'll find everything you're looking for. But um. I still, I still contend. I, I have told this. I believe. Maybe I'm. I mean, people out there, you got to listen to me. I believe, like Art Packard and the car, the, the 32. I truly believe that anybody out there can build those cars if they have the motivation. I do, and I do understand that there's so many different things on those cars that it, it really takes more than one person, or it'll take a lifetime. I mean that that part, right. uh, you know. You have yeah, to have you've help. surrounded yeah. yourself as I with a team of intelligent guys who are also artisans that are proud of what they do, yeah. and that collective allows it to come. Sure. sure. And and you know I'll I'll brag on you though. You have you're very very sharp, and you're unbelievably creative. But and there's a lot of stuff that trickles out of your head that doesn't trickle out of most, but that's why you're where you are. <laughs> yes. That's why you are yeah. where you are. But anybody at home who cares enough to do the whole job and see it through, learn, give a damn, lose the money on it, because you're just gonna yeah. spend money on mm -hmm. that. You can do it. You know, my my first car that he blessed me in the magazines. I built my dad's barn. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the next one, my charger that was top 10 car of the year was built in my shared underground tandem parking garage yep. in an apartment in studio city and not what, in a driveway, right. ah. not in a garage with an actual garage right. in a parking <laughs> garage at my apartment. Cause I wanted to bad enough and I'm stupid enough yep. to, to do it no matter what. I and, just and wanted you, to do it. Right. You, you just wanted up, to do it. And then you ratchet up one level and Scott Sullivan still building cars in his dad's it, two car there, garage there next to his house. Sullivan, in Dayton, Ohio. The man himself yeah, at yeah, home yeah. and can come out at right. any time and clear the floor <laughs> at any time. Time. I just at finished. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just just finished a feature for Hot Rod on his fifty four. Yeah, and, and, and that's got more work me, in it. Than oh, hours grill hour alone. Yes, the yes. grill alone. It was alone. hard to write that story sure. because there's so many things to talk about. So you have to pick little things and and just right. you know and say, just look at that. <laughs> there, there is talent involved for sure, but that's practicing and honing it. Yeah, and there's imagination and creativity involved. Okay, some people have more than others. Him more than me, but I'm trying oh, to catch up. You, you know what? I, oh, you know please, what I think it's please. Oh. <laughs> but 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 wait, but, I'm not a judge, so you no, know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want a big check later. So, uh, <laughs> but 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 taking the time to do the job right is free. Yep. yep. Caring enough to to do the extra, stand there and sand another four hours yes. and everything well, else that's just wanting to bad enough mm -hmm. how how i got into this is because i wanted stuff and couldn't afford it couldn't afford it thank so, you 
you know, that's yep. it. I think that's how we that's all got it. here. I cleaned up that's every junkyard part. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> I, and like, I wanted to, uh, to chop a car, so I saved up, bought a, 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 a little MIG welder from like the, like Home Depot or something, yeah. and learned how to MIG weld. <laughs> you're, you're talking about your your apartment story. So uh, in Costa Mesa, I lived in an apartment complex, and I only had a carport, and it was a shared carport, two cars. So I actually chopped my 34 Chevy in the carport next to my neighbor's cars. I put blankets over his car, yeah, same, same. and, there, and yeah. there's and there's no yep. power in there. No. So, so you ran an extension, an extension cord? cord? No, to the, to the light. The light bulb. Light bulb. I put oh, one of those yeah. light bulbs. <laughs> and then I found, I got the lock off of the timer box that turned those <laughs> lights on and off. Yeah. And then would go flip the switch and run it. And the neighbors complained because when I was welding their TVs, <laughs> their the TVs would, would, would stack. Would stack. Yeah. And that's, I got pictures of that somewhere. And there's, that's funny. There's a roof that's on the funny. ground. There's parts everywhere. Uh, beer bottles. That <laughs> usually goes into, yeah, you know, sure. that's part, part of it. Right. But that's, and it's just because if you want something bad enough and you're motivated, yep. you, you learn how to get it. And that's yep. how I was raised because I didn't, I was raised without money we were raised fairly poor right so it's like even as a little kid figured out yeah you know, if i wanted a bike i went and bought parts and then put one together and one I, together. Wanted to, I wanted yeah. to learn how to surf and so i couldn't afford a surfboard i bought books at the library and learned how to shape that didn't work out so well but uh <laughs> but some of my other projects uh as you know, we just <laughs> as we yeah. just brushed that aside yeah, like that, that didn't work out yeah. so well <laughs> Like twelve, <laughs> trying to shape a surfboard. Yeah, like, yeah I, it's but, just, but it's anyway. all those learned experiences uh, that have that, that have built up to where you are now. Yeah, yeah. that's the point. Yeah. It's like it's it's the way your brain is is wired. Sure. Yeah. If you could just if you know and are motivated enough that you could do anything and just learn how to do it, yeah. and yeah. Yep. and that's why I think where people lose it. You need the motivation and you need to put in the time. Yep. You that's need it. to put. There's yeah. nothing you need to more. put in the time. No. Yeah, yep. Yep. and you'll learn what you're good at, what you're bad at. So interesting uh, about talking about art and mechanics. So mm-hmm. you were talking about your race, race car stuff, yeah. and then we we're talking about art stuff. So I got into this with a 66 Mustang, and it was my first car. I was poor. It breaks. You learn how to, you learn how to, learn fix, how to it. fix it. So I was mechanical. Uh-huh. I, I wanted to go uh, street racing. So uh-huh. that was my thing. So I would do street racing, work on the car of the week, and street race on the weekends. So I had a very, a very good handle on mechanics and engines and things like that. Yeah. The art part, I never really considered myself more artistic. I come from a logical brained okay. uh, family of engineers and things like that. So okay. I could f- do anything mechanical, electrical. Uh-huh. But the art part came later for me. Okay. And so I, and I didn't realize that and I had to develop it and evolve it. And okay. I didn't know it was there really. So you can take the mechanical part and then start to add in the art part uh-huh. and that's a winning combination in cars and that's when you know together yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i mean and i would say to people too if you got more of the art brain it's easy to learn the mechanical part uh-huh. it's easy to learn to weld you know and if you got the mechanical side work on the art side yeah. and then together you know you can come up yeah. with a great yeah. car building you know uh, and brain. i think you could take this to the next level and say that we're all limited self-limited we all tell ourselves oh i can't sure. do that when in reality sure probably could if you apply yourself yeah it's just a and matter of whether or not you're willing to and there's to do that work social steps too because i'll i'll i'm gonna i'm gonna springboard off of you saying you know you had parts laying around you know at, at the at the apartment and you're you know yeah. <laughs> the tv shows <laughs> and you're just willing to get the people going you know, what are you doing? Looking yeah. at you. Hey. I, when I was when I was at the at my apartment, there was one outlet on the other side of the building. So I bought like four extension cords, <laughs> ran it around the side of the building, <clears throat> and out back was this little cement pad with like a table and chair, which nobody used. Mm-hmm. So I was back there with a drill, with a wire wheel, cleaning all the crap off of the suspension parts I got right. at pick your part. Yep. Yeah. And then I bought those cheap little. You know, eight by twelve foot plastic. You throw it down when you paint a room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Drop. And cars. I covered all my neighbors' cars, and I epoxy <laughs> spray painted all my suspension parts hanging from the water pipes. <laughs> and people come downstairs, <laughs> and they're like, "This uh, menagerie. What, what you doing? <laughs> 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 Nothing. <laughs> you didn't all, see yeah. anything. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. I got a two bulb lamp. I pulled out of the trash and rewired. That's my work light." 
Oh. And every night I'm carrying my toolbox and my jack stands in my jack from the second floor. Sure, because you can't leave them down Jacked there. The yeah, car yeah. Up, work on the thing, put up my piss ass lights that are mm. really not working well and probably more of a fire hazard than anything. <laughs> and work on the darn car and spray the parts off the freaking water pipes and then pack it all up. Yeah. fold up all the plastic off of yeah. all the neighbor's cars. So it's funny what we're willing to do because the rest of the world goes, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. What are yeah. you doing? Why would you do this? Why would you yeah. do this? And that's yeah. what I did. It's fun. Yeah. I describe yeah. that as yeah. the sickness. That's the sickness. It is the sickness. Like when people ask, how do you get it? Like people that aren't really car But people. a lot of people aren't willing to spray parts in their pipes and their <laughs> yeah. or, or, or sit there and <laughs> run well, a wire up to the light. Yeah, it's true. No, we're crazy but, enough because we wanted to. Bad that's enough. the thing is like you once you get sucked, not sucked in. Once you once you're into the car thing, it, it is like a sickness. It's like it's it's an obsession yep. and it's a passion, and that's what makes this industry and this hobby amazing yes. because it's personal and yeah. very people, personal. Cars yep. are personal, yep. and the, the the obsession is personal, and there's so much that's just ingrained in us. I think yep. it's other countries have have followed along and there's like great car scenes in other countries. But I, I think just on the history of, of the car, mm -hmm. America has a unique passion or a, a love a, affair a, a, with a, a car. With a car. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. That other people, other countries just don't, don't have, cause they didn't, didn't live it. And they've, yeah. they've caught on and they're, they're, they, they, they follow along what we do a little bit, mm -hmm. but there's just so much about the ingrained Americana of mm. car culture in uh -huh. us. And it's hard to explain because you, when you get that obsession, you, that sickness, like when I was trying to have a normal job, every minute is, what am I going to do? When is it, when I'm going to the shop, yeah. what am I going to do? Like my yeah. briefcase had magazines and I'm going to order parts at lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yep. just, it's just, you can't, yep. you can't yep. stop. Yep. Now, yep. I, so yep. I was in, when I was living in studio city, I had the, you had already featured the El Camino mm -hmm. and I'm working with Chrysler and uh, so I'm working with the dealerships during the day, and at night I'm at the. It's still there. It's a FedEx office now. It was a Kinko's, and okay. it's still there on the corner of Ventura and Laurel Canyon. Okay. And I was there till two, three in the morning every night, making photocopies and creating the Pure Vision logo emblem thing. And I created Pure Vision in the Kinkos <laughs> at, at, at night. And, so and, they're going to get a percentage out of you? Yes, yes you can. And, 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 so, and that's, that's what I did. And I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. I, I got to yeah. do this Just and I got to do, do another this. one because I, I, I got a magazine car now. So I can, we, can, we can do another one. And, and where am I going to build? I don't know. And, <laughs> and, it, and it didn't matter. It just, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's just once you get that, that way scarce in yeah. here. And yeah. when people ask you about that are not car people and ask you to try and define it, it's almost impossible. Now, you, you there's so many facets of yes, it. Right. Yes, right. Yes. There's so many facets. There's yeah. the import thing. There's the sports car thing. The supercar exactly. thing. The hot yeah. rod thing. The custom thing. But yet people on the outside just see it just, as yeah. you're just a car guy. Or, but there's no, they so see us as you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> and, and, like and, and, and unfortunately, at cocktail parties, when that happens, and you try and talk to people who yeah. are not car people, it's like, clears the room. It's so painful. We have nothing to talk about. You have nothing to talk about, you know? Yeah. So it's and it's 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 an interesting brotherhood and it's a and it's an interesting it's fascinating uh you remember uh in bullseye street rider magazine bill durnham yes durham? yeah yeah i followed that I so did i religiously and he was on i have an old vhs good guys tape and they have a little quick interview with him and it's so true because i've i've copied this this phrase from him because i've watched it he goes when you come to one of these car shows the heavy hitters, the big, the big dollar guys, when they get through the gate, everyone's equal. Mm, you'll watch yeah. a, um, and uh, you'll watch a, uh, you know, like a, a surgeon, a retired surgeon, mm -hmm. hang out with an eighteen-year-old who's a busboy. Yeah, and they'll both be geeking out on that on that yes. Cragger intake. Yes, right. right. And yes. they'll be talking about it. Yeah, and income level. An age it went out the matter. window yeah. where back in high school, one year old different yeah. who sure. you hung out with, let alone your parents' income or not. Right. And inside of these doors. It doesn't matter. It, it don't matter. No. Or, or especially in a common thing, if that's really neato, you'll have five guys talking about how bitching that is. And every one of them come from completely different backgrounds and completely yes. different incomes and completely different everything. And it's such a equalizer. The it, common it, ground. It, it's such a, a, a yeah. yes, it's, it's such a common ground. Yeah. And that's really cool. That's yeah. the really it cool is. about yeah. it is that it, it brings so many different kind of people completely together. Yeah. And they're all like, 
I like that too. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. And, it, that, and that's neat. Well, that's what like that's that. what's fun about our art too. Is when those guys like, I like what you did. Like, yay! You know, that's <laughs> that's like, <laughs> yay! That's like, like that's all I want. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Equal yeah. admiration yeah. society, which I've tried to push since I've sure. been allowed into these circles. Oh, I'm and like, why don't well, we all just hang out and well, like and dig in each other's car? Man. I think everyone yeah. that we that we we know. I mean, there's there's a couple of shitty people there I mean, there's shitty people in our industry like any other industry like but for the any most industry. part for the yeah. most part all the other bills we're all at the bar right across the street all together you know one of these car shows all hang out yep you know catching up yeah and there's no i don't feel like there's at least no. for me any kind of competitive no. nature of any no. kind and most of it's like you know, dude it's, it's i really like what yeah. you did on that yeah, yeah. yeah. that and was that's real fun. cool it's, it's well, fun to be in the in like in the group where everyone is focused and understands and appreciates the same thing. Sure, and you can yeah. share it and show it, and and, and we're just, all here to look at the cars and say, "I really like that. I want to integrate that into yeah, my, the next thing that and, I do." And yeah. it's it's so interesting because really cool. you get the compliments across the board, but it, it does. There's this underlining thinking it, which you've said, and I agree with you. And we all know we have a sickness. Yeah. It's, it's, it all, yeah. it's all like we're a it leopard is. colony. <laughs> and, yeah. and we all know we got to hang together because no one else wants to be around Nobody us. Nobody else wants to be around us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, because and, and it makes no sense to the people that haven't, yeah. have, I, I, you know, drank the Kool Aid. If they haven't drank the Kool Aid, they're not going to ever yeah. understand. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and I think that's what's great about the camaraderie, too, is we all know we're whacked out of our heads. And, yeah. We, yeah. and, we, and we have to do this thing that just drives us yes. as much as we complain about the shop and the customers and the this and the that. And, and why are we there tomorrow? Because we got to. It's what, still the greatest what, job in the world. It's, it's still hard. the greatest job in it's the world. It's hard. Yeah. But it it's still yeah. amazing. It I mean, how many people in, their, in, in the world, like in their careers, can say, I'm doing what I love, my passion, and getting paid for it? Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. Well, maybe not as much as we like. But, you <laughs> know. <laughs> and, on top of it, and on top of it. But it doesn't matter. We, we get to do what we love and multiply that time. So, we like being creative, so we, we not only do we love building cars, but we like expressing it, the creativity. That's yeah. more important. Yeah. That's yeah. more. It and it I, and I've, I've tried to explain that to people. It's like, I'd gladly sacrifice a paycheck for getting to do create what I like. Create it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the thing is, is you're just as bad as I am. Mm -hmm. Everything gets... Every, uh, my bicycles, I hand build and cut and change around the, the, the <laughs> stupid mailbox you cut up. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything's like, you know, that'd look cooler. If <laughs> it's, it's hard to, Dude, to stop. Executing, you can't like, he, stop the, the, the can't. wheels turning, right? He has this wonderful backyard that he did. <laughs> it's a wonderful yeah. backyard with a, this really neat water feature pool thingy that he did. Yeah. And he did a lion, you did a lion's share. Of, of the yeah. digging the hole yeah. and setting it up because you have plumbing, a problem. Because yeah. <laughs> you have this the plumber, vision of what you want to do. The plumber it to look like. who, who does it for a living yeah. didn't do it as good as, like when he did it, I tore it all out. Like, no, <laughs> they, all the pipes got to line up. The, the, the pumps they have to be, be in a row. What and are then you all, doing? The, all yes, this plumbing right. needs to go in a yeah. row. And so I ended You're, up doing it myself. Go like this. They're supposed to go like this. They did. They went all around. Like, they need to all be lined up. And like, it's weird, but that's fun. I, but I that's like fun. that's fun. Exactly. I, I like, but that's fun. I, I like that's almost like that's almost like vacation time because like, I get to do work that's not car work. So yes. it's still work, but in my yeah. head it's like I'm gonna do this other thing. So that's just like, vic you know, it's it's like hobby time, even though yeah. it's still work. So, so kids just, out like, there sure. listening in. This man is telling you doing plumbing at home <laughs> can be exciting and like vacation. And <laughs> Don't become a car builder. <laughs> That's what happens to you. <laughs> well, plumbers make more. I yeah, guarantee yeah, you, plumbers I'm make sure more. They do. <laughs> But it, that and that's it's jokingly, but that's part of the sickness. He looks at all the tubing and goes, "Oh no, no, no yeah, yeah, no." <laughs> that, that will not do. <laughs> but then, but then to be fair to the plumbers out there, I'm sure there are plumbers out there that go, "No, it has to be parallel." It has there to be. There, there are, there yes. are, because I took yes. pictures of what this guy did and showed some other people. Like, and oh they went, my, oh. oh my, I wouldn't have done that. So, <laughs> oh so yeah, so yeah, it was maybe it was my particular, <laughs> yeah, my particular yeah. guy. You know, besides the sickness that comes around to uh, actually. You know, wanting quality, yeah. wanting something to be done properly and right. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not like, well, you know, dude, let that go. It's like, no, that, that's not right, and I own that. I don't want it that right. nonsense. And, yeah. It's kind of. It's, and we're yeah. kind of, and we kind of yeah. like loop back around to that kind of every man thing because I can just do it and be excited to do it, and then not. Uh, I'd rather learn how to do it and not pay somebody and explain it to them to some extent. Right. So, like, I, I, you know, that goes right back to where I started. Is like, if I want something. <laughs> 
that do I it. can't afford or or don't want. You know, I can I can learn how to do it. Right. And 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 then it's not just monetary, but it's like the accomplishment afterwards. Like, all right, those. This is going to about sound stupid. Like, yeah, those pool pipes look really cool. Like, you know, like, but, but, you know, like, whatever. Yes, but, you know, they do. And then, and I, I just, I just. I Martha, just, did you see Troy's pool? <laughs> 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 yeah, it works. It works. Uh, yeah. This pool plumbing's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's one of the reasons I bought a, a vintage home. Is because I can build it like a vintage car, uh-huh. and it's it's fun. I, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm just sick all the way around. And the more we talk, I I got some. It's okay to admit it. That's yeah. what this is about. This if is actually a, a, psych- a therapy show. They can uh, refer. Maybe I need help. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I'm in yeah. line behind you. <laughs> yeah. <then>, so. <laughs> so we could probably do this for another About hour, three uh, more yeah. hours, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Easy, and it yeah. would be a lot of fun. So uh, well, we, we can have Troy on again. Yes, absolutely. We can definitely absolutely. bring Troy up again. Of course. Yes. So we're here at the uh, at the Grand National Roaster Show. Our friends there have helped us. John Buck has helped us get here, so yep. we can Kevin we Doyle, can interview John some, Buck. Yep. Yep. Yes, all those people. We really appreciate that. And uh, we also want to acknowledge ARP Bolt.com for uh, helping us out with this thing. Th- those guys As do always. a wonderful job, a yep. wonderful job. Thank you and, again. Uh, yes, and it's just been, um, this is a lot of fun. This has been yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Troy. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. I mean, thank you. you. you know, when we, we talked about, when you invited me on, like I figured there'd be no dead air on this show. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch of talkers happen. in one room. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thanks for following along with us. We're going to keep doing this thing and uh, keep watching.